Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example is a ball rolling down an incline. It starts from a height of 5 meters, and the question is when the ball reaches the bottom, what is its final velocity, assuming that the initial velocity is equal to zero. The mass of the ball, and it's a hollow ball, is 1.2 kilograms, and the radius is 0.2 meters. Also, we're going to assume that the heat loss due to friction as it's rolling down the incline is negligible, and we can ignore it. So what we're going to do here is use the equation that the initial energy at the top of the hill must equal the final energy at the bottom of the hill. Now, the equation in general can be written as the work put into the system plus the original potential energy plus the original kinetic energy is equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus any heat lost due to friction. And just as we mentioned before, we can assume that that's going to be very small, so we're going to ignore that. No heat loss due to friction, and we can say that there's no work put into the system. The ball is just rolling down by itself. Identifying also that initially there's no velocity, which means there cannot be any initial kinetic energy. And when the ball gets to the bottom, there's no height left, so there's no final potential energy. This whole equation then boils down to the initial potential energy that the ball has at the top of the incline is equal to the final kinetic energy. However, since the ball is rolling, we can also assume that it'll have both translational and rotational kinetic energy, so we can write it like this, kinetic energy translational plus kinetic energy rotational. Now we can go ahead and plug in what we know. The potential energy initially is going to be mgh, the translational kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill is going to be one-half mv squared, and the kinetic energy rotational is going to be one-half i, which is the moment of inertia, times omega squared. Now, to find omega, we realize that there's a relationship between the tangential velocity and omega with the equation v equals r times omega, which means omega is equal to v divided by r. Thus, we can replace omega by v, by v over r, or omega squared by v squared over r. What about the moment of inertia of a hollow ball? The moment of inertia of a hollow ball is equal to 2 thirds m r squared. Of course, in this case, we use a small m, so let me put a small m there. So that would be the moment of inertia of a hollow ball. The moment of inertia of a solid ball is 2 fifths mr squared, but for a hollow ball, it's 2 thirds mr squared. So we have to plug that in there as well. What that means is we end up with mgh is equal to 1 half mv squared plus 1 half times the moment of inertia is 2 thirds mr squared. And then omega squared can be written as v squared over r squared. And right away we realize that the r squares cancel out. And one more thing, also notice that every term in this equation has the mass in it. So we can also divide both sides of the equation by m and eliminate the mass. Now let's write the remainder of the equation up here and see what we have. On the left side we have gh is equal to, on the right side we have 1 half v squared plus 1 half times 2 thirds which is one-third v squared. Now we have to combine the right side. The common denominator would be 6. That means we can write gh is equal to 3 sixth v squared plus 2 sixth v squared, which means that gh is equal to 5 sixth v squared, or v squared is equal to, hmm, that would be 6 over 5 times gh, or we can say that v is equal to the square root of 6 over 5 times gh. Then we plug in the values that we have. 6 over 5, g is 9.8, and h was 5 meters. Let's see what we get. So we have 9.8 times 5 divided by 5 times 6 equals... And then we take the square root, 7.67 .67 meters per second would be the final velocity of the object when it reaches the bottom. Now notice, what if we did not take into account the kinetic energy, the rotational kinetic energy, then this term would not be there. 
then we end up with potential energy equals kinetic energy, or GH would be one-half V squared, or V would be the square root of 2GH, and that should be a familiar equation to you. You can see that because of the rotational kinetic energy, it's not going quite as fast. Instead of V equals the square root of 2GH, it's only 6 fifth GH, because part of the energy is also taken up by the rotation of the ball. And that's how we do that.